So welcome back. Uh, last week we were taking a look at linear perspective as a means of being able to create the illusion of space or depth uh, in an image. And we're going to be using that particular skill in order to create the background space and environment for the characters of your graphic novelette. This week we're switching uh, focus a little bit and we're going to be taking a look at the character itself. And the resources that are provided are meant as a guide. There are no preset expectations as to what your character looks like, uh, or characters for that matter. It is entirely up to you, right? And uh, one of the things that we are encouraging you to do is to take a look at the resource on different styles of characters or, or comics and choose something that you believe that you are going to be uh, going to be ex uh, very successful with because one thing that we want to to have happen here is that you are proud of the work that you are able to create. So take a look at the styles and choose something that is comfortable for you, right? The, the idea here is that uh, you're going to want to enjoy working with uh, the style and the, the story that you have created, right? And to be perfectly honest and transparent, cartooning or graphic design work, this is not my forte by any stretch of the imagination. So this is going to be a bit of a stretch for me as well. Uh, and in today's video, you're going to see me go through the process of creating the a character for a graphic novelette. Uh, and I'm going to be making some mistakes and there's going to be things that I'm going to make that I am not particularly um, proud of perhaps. Uh, and I'm definitely, I know I'm not going to be uh, liking either. It's just sort of the nature of my creative process in that uh, I tend to make a lot of mistakes before I get uh, to some place that I like. So today what we're going to need, you're going to need a pencil. If you've got a uh, pen drawing pencil set, fantastic, but uh, it's not necessarily uh, just a regular kind of HB pencil is going to work just fine as well. Um, probably not going to need a, a blending stomp, but if you've got one, fantastic. But your eraser, now that you're going to want to have handy because if you're like me, you're going to make lots of mistakes. So my recommendation is have yourself set up uh, with a, a workspace. You have some paper. Uh, I've got a few sheets here that I'm going to probably go through. Uh, I also have my laptop. Uh, it's just outside of the, the picture space here. But I have the resource uh, that was put together, character design, character design part A faces. Um, I have that open because I'm going to be taking a look at and utilizing some of the images uh, and the ideas that are in there in order to kind of start helping me develop uh, what my character is going to end up looking like. Uh, so there's going to be some times where I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to uh, do my drawing. Uh, and then there will be some others where I'm going to sit down and I'll, I'll do some talking. Uh, over the video as well, just to sort of help explain what is going through my head as I'm going through this particular process. So first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a look at the screen or the, the slide about this idea of emotions. And there's a, a fairly large list here. All right, pick one or two that, you know, you might want to, um, uh, to, to explore because having an idea of what the emotional care, the, the emotional state of your character is going to help you make some des decisions around how you are going to, um, how you're going to end up drawing the, the different features. Okay. So when I'm taking a look at this list, um, I am number one, I'm thinking of the idea of uh, anger. Cause my, the story that I am thinking about, uh, and you see in the examples is about uh, the frustrations that I am having and trying to balance everything out, uh, responsibilities with school and responsibilities at home with family. So there's some anger, uh, and some frustration, and I'm just jotting these down in the corner just as a quick reminder, but where I'm going with these emotions is, I am trying to also uh, get to a point where um, there's a, a stronger sense of joy in my character as well as um, uh, it's like that happiness feeling, right? And there, there's this idea also that I want to get to is that I am despite um, despite the fact that I am being torn in a bunch of different directions, I am very passionate about making sure that I'm doing the best for my family. 
uh, as well. So once I've done gone through and I've thought about some of these emotions and, and such that I want to be exploring, uh, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start thinking about the, the shape of the head. Now there's a variety of different uh, examples here, right? And this is where you're going to be thinking about cutting and pasting together um, what you see in this uh, PowerPoint, right? Um, the idea uh, as well is that, you know, you don't have to be entirely original, that your original originality is really coming through how you are combining different pieces together. Um, so I've got some ideas um, about the shape head. I'm going to start exploring those. Uh, and I'm also, again, thinking about that uh, style. And the style that I like is kind of along the, uh, the lines of um, Persepolis uh, or uh, the Louis Riel uh, exemplars that you have seen as well. Uh, and that is the high contrast. So that's kind of the style that I think I'm going to be working in uh, overall. And now it's time to start sitting down and I'm going to start exploring some basic head shapes. Now the main character, um, I'm going to be looking at myself um, as a um, sample. So I I'm going to try and have a photograph of myself. Again, that's going to be up on the screen in front of me so that I can reference it. Not that I'm trying to recreate it exactly, but so that I get an idea of um, how I can potentially use it. So I'm going to spend a few minutes. I'm going to explore some different uh, head shapes and possibilities. I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. Alright, so what I've done is I've gone through, I've identified a variety of different sort of head shapes. Right? I really have no idea what it is that uh, this is actually going to end up looking like. Um, but there, there's some possibilities to start with and, and realistically I'm not going to end up using all of these different uh, heads, right? The idea is that we're going to go through a process here and start to narrow things down, right? So uh, if I were you, what I would be doing at this point is making sure to take a quick photograph of this process, right? Because I don't need to see you develop all of these different uh, head shapes into adding additional details. So if I'm looking around at this, right, I know right away that I don't like this one here. Uh, and I'm not a particular fan of this one. Uh, and I don't like this one here. I'm starting to think that I'm kind of kind of thinking that this one might be a possibility and I think this one might be a possibility and uh, this one. I'm kind of liking sort of the, the, the larger chin um, idea. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to just kind of either work, continue to work and develop on these, but I'm going to just move to a sheet, a uh, fresh sheet of paper. And again, just kind of working on, I'm making this a little bit bigger now. Right? You notice that I'm using some sketchy lines as I'm trying to recreate this. And I've got sort of that chin element coming in. So that's one. Right? And I'm going to come through. I want this kind of a, to be a slant. Thinking a bit about the chin shape there. And sort of where I'm thinking about the overall placement of my eyes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to start thinking about eye placement and flipping through with some of the different facial features. Um, with the eyes in particular, look at the shape, look at position. Are they close together? Are they far apart? Uh, and again, the the slide presentation that we have for you does provide a fair bit of um, a fair number of examples. So you might want to be just kind of taking a look at some of those different possibilities as well. Okay, so again, I'm going to just kind of start drawing and, and you can kind of follow along uh, on the screen. So 
uh, at this point I kind of have a rough sketch, right? It's not perfect, it's not refined, it's still extremely sketchy. Uh, I've got one expression that I, uh, um, I'm kind of developing here, uh, and I can continue to work uh, and develop. Uh, so one thing that I have at home uh, is a light table. Uh, this is just going to allow me to, to uh, trace through and, and sort of recreate the basic shape of the head. So once you have that basic shape uh, figured out, what you might want to do is just go to a window and just quickly kind of trace out um, the shape of the, the head, the parts of this drawing that you actually are kind of fond of, the parts that you like, um, and go from, use that in order to kind of help save some time. Right, with uh, this type of work, a uh, light table or a window is going to be really, really, really helpful. Um, so, you know, don't feel as though you're taking a shortcut here. Really what you're doing is you're being efficient. Right? So once I have that basic sketch out, right, I'm going to kind of block in um, sort of where the, the nose is and the, the different features because I don't want those to be changing their location too much. Right, but I, what I am going to do is start to play around with uh, thinking about how uh, I can change the expression. So right now I've got something that's a little bit uh, angry and fr uh, upset. Right, what, what I want to do now is start thinking about um, a concentrated look. Right, so the um, the hours that I, I might be spending uh, at the computer. Uh, trying to get lessons together and going through and assessing uh, and giving feedback to all of you guys, right? It's it's a it's a lot of work, right? So I'm going to try and maintain that overall shape, but now I'm looking at changing sort of the shape of the eyelids overall. I'm going to have them become a little bit more prominent. They're sloping down, kind of in that opposite direction here. I, I, I find my eraser. All right, again, I'm starting to pull out some of these details that I don't need. So I'm going to continue kind of playing around with this. Uh, you can follow along, take a look, uh, and uh, start getting some ideas about what yours, uh, your work might end up looking like. So uh, welcome back. I just went in to uh, get a couple more resources in order to help me out here. Again, I'm a very firm believer that visual research or having an idea of what it is that you are wanting to create and that sense of style uh, is really, really beneficial, right? It's not, uh, we're not looking at, at replicating or copying at this point, but we're looking for a sense of influence in terms of what it is that you are wanting to end up creating. All right, again, rem quick reminder, right? the sky's the limit with this particular task. It doesn't matter the style um, or the approach that you guys are taking. What we're looking for is that you're using this opportunity to develop and refine your particular approach to making imagery. All right, so I'm taking a look at uh, this resource. It's called Persepolis uh, by uh, Marjane Satrapi. I highly recommend this particular uh, graphic novel. It's it's a beautifully done in a high contrast style and I'm going to be leaving this resource out off to the side. It'll be just out of screen but the reason that I'm showing it to you is that what I'm wanting to do is to take these rough sketches which are very loosely done right now. Right, They're pretty good um, but they're very loosely done and work get them to be a little bit more refined. All right, so these are supposed to be self-portraits of, of me. Uh, I'm not too sure whether or not they look exactly like me or you can see some similarities you guys can let me know in the posts uh, and the stream as well um, just having trying to have some fun with this uh, as well okay so what I'm going to be doing now is uh, going back to my 
window or light table and I'm going to be creating one more uh, copy that I'm going to use in order to get to that refined state. Right? Again, using my um, visual research as a guide. As I'm going through this process, I'm going to be paying attention to a few things. Number one okay, is just kind of maintaining that sense of proportion and, and, and overall placement of the different facial features. This is an opportunity to kind of correct those a little bit. Um, but most importantly, I'm going to be taking a look at the line quality. Which lines need to be straight or angular? Which ones need to be curvy? Which ones need to be thick? Which ones need to be thin? Which ones could I use a lighter weight or less pressure? And which ones do I need to be pressing really hard? Right? And the idea here is that we're, we're utilizing uh, the qualities of line in order to create variety and visual interest. Right? So in order to kind of get started, I think I'm going to start with this guy here because I think in my narrative this is going to be one of the first uh, characters that I'm going to be looking at creating. All right, so for the rest of the video, um, I'm just going to be going through that process. Uh, again, I'm going to speed the video up so you don't have to watch it in real time, but you can get an idea of what the, that process looks like. All right, uh, so if you have any questions while you are working on yours, please make sure that you're emailing us uh, as we do want to be able to help you out and get your work to the best possible state. All right, here we go. So there you have it. So I am totally aware of that this is going to take you a little bit of time. So this particular part of the, the drawing, uh, I'm looking at the time stamping on the video right now, and that's about uh, 20 minutes worth of work, just kind of cleaning it up. All right. Uh, and again, I did ended up doing three of these. These were a little bit quicker, probably probably again maybe 25 to 30 minutes between the three of them as I'm thinking through so like really if you guys come up with two of these that would be fantastic All right and this was about um, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes worth of thinking and exploration right so all together all right I'm looking for approximately one hour's worth of work as you go from uh, rough sketches to exploring to refining, right? And that's gonna be your work for the day. Please, please, please remember, photograph your work. We want to see your process and how it is that your work is developing uh, over the that course of that hour or so of drawing. Um, you'll be asked to submit those drawings, but also more importantly, as you're working, email us with uh, the photographs that you're taking and ask for suggestions and feedback and we'll be able to provide some of that uh, as, as much as we possibly can. All right, good luck. I cannot wait to see what your characters look like. Uh, and w the first uh, draft of these will be due uh, middle of the week. So good luck and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.